You're watching Democratically Speaking, Mark Lindy, your host, and also the chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. In my new role, I get to interview all the candidates that have a D Democrat next to their name for city office. It is a nonpartisan election, so you don't get to pick a party, but uh, Jacob is a member of our Democratic City Committee, Jacob Tagger, and I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you very much. Glad we're, we're able to have this forum again. I'm well, very excited. This is the one-on-one -on -one forum. This isn't yeah. the debate forum. This is the introductory. It's not the I-team. It's the tell us about Jacob Tagger, who you are, why you're running, and I'll ask you a few questions along the way. It's a conversation between the two of us. It's a chance for you to present yourself to the voters, uncut and uncensored, which doesn't happen a lot in television. Oh, I'm not excited about democratically speaking. We've been on for a while, so I'm very excited. This is something that, that I was looking forward to for probably the past year, year mm -hmm. and a half. So I'm excited. So who's Jacob Tagger? I know your background, but <laughs> not everybody knows your background. You've been very visible in the community for years. You've done a lot of community service projects. Tell us who you are. I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton, city of champions, and I, I want to make it a point uh, from going forward is this is not, this is Brockton, the city of champions. I've been here again 39 years. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Richmond Street projects and very proud proud of that and yeah I went to South Junior High School graduated Brockton High 1995 graduate of Massasoit Community College I'm currently with my wife in Brockton good story about my wife is we were together in high school uh, for a while split up and, and you know get, got back together God brought us back together we're raising two gorgeous, two gorgeous kids, um, son, 13-year-old son and a daughter, 17 years old. That's my both. That I love the kids there. Um, you know, I'm just, I've been a coach in Brockton for 21 years, mm -hmm. and I'm working with youth, AAU, uh, high, highly competitive basketball travel. I've um, been a youth coordinator in Brockton, Boys and Girls Club, um, the Brockton Housing Authorities. I was a counselor in a program. I, I ran the basketball court program at the youth division YMCA. Mm -hmm. um, currently, I'm a district trainer and a general manager for a Fortune 500 company. Um, yeah, I just I absolutely love this city. It's it's given me everything, and it's not material things. It's uh, it's the city's raised me, given me a lot of love, nurtured me. Um, my family's here. My friends are here. Um, you know, I just I'm very proud to be a Brocktonian. Now let me ask you a question. You yes, started sir. out running for Ward 6. Yes, sir. Then you were going to run for Council at Large. Yep. What prompted you into the race for mayor? That's a great question, and that's a question that I, I want to answer. My initial goal was to, to be on the city council and work with the city council, you know, legislation, um, yeah, and, and work with the mayor. I, I didn't see uh, with our current administration and you know it's been a combative relationship in my opinion from what I've witnessed between the city council and the mayor for whoever's fault I won't give my opinion on who I think you know, is at fault there but uh, I just feel I can be a lot more effective going for the, the you know to be the mayor of the city of champions um, I'm not I'm, I wouldn't be running if I was happy with the current administration it's not you know a personal thing against Bill it's just I haven't been been happy with a lot of the decisions he's been making, and and that's why. Okay. I think I can be more effective as as the mayor in in, in Brockton as opposed to a city council at this time. So talk about your your qualifications, okay? People have to get up there, and I ran for office a couple of times, yes, you have. and I had to say why I was a better candidate, not why I was a better person but why I was more qualified. What, what, what brings your qualifications See, to the I table? think being a good person is a qualification. Um, you know, you have to, you're, you're not, I don't like the term, and I know you don't like the term politician. It's you're a public servant. You're elected to represent the people who voted you in, who chose you to represent them. So I think integrity and being a good person is probably the biggest quality. Mm -hmm. I look at, it, at the position of mayor as a manager. Mm -hmm. And I would say out of all the candidates, I have the most managerial experience um, as, out of all of them. That's, you know, so, you know, it's, a, it's also a coach. You're managing people. 
You have to put your employees, your staff in the right positions to be successful. You also have to surround yourself with the best people, um, the experts to, to come to the solutions that, that are needed to you know, help better the city of champions. Um, so honestly, I, I mean, I'm 39, I'm the youngest out of the group, but I'm a veteran of, of Brockton, uh, 39 years. And again, I strongly believe my resume is my managerial experience. I have more managerial experience than any of the candidates, including the current mayor. Talk about the coaching aspect. Yes. That's how I first met you. The funny thing about living in Brockton is it's a big little town. Yes. Okay. A lot I know of you for years. Yeah. I know Bill Carpenter for years. I went to high school with Chris Hopgood. Yeah. I know Chris McMillan from the council. I know all four of you. Okay. Um, talk about mayor as coach. Yes. What does that mean? It. You're the the motivator, you're the person who, again who puts your players, your your staff in the in the right positions to win, to succeed, um, and, and you have to make tough decisions. You know, at the end of the day, every every decision you make ultimately falls on the mayor, on the coach, um, and it, you have to uplift people, you have to empower people, you have to see the the whole the entire picture. Um, so I do believe that that. A mayor is a coach as well as a manager. I, I strongly believe believe that. Um, you know, you surround yourself with the best players, um, and, and you just you know try to make the best decisions for the team. Talk about Fortune 500 company. Yeah. Okay. Talk about you're a trainer and yeah. you're a manager there. Yeah. How will that play if you make the transition to be the mayor of Brock? Um, I, you know, I know how to read a budget. I know it's a a lot larger budget, but the the concepts are the same. Um, so you know, I read P and Ls. Um, you know, control, we have to control payroll, um, other expenses. Um, so I do think I have a grasp on on the budget aspect. Of it. again, I'm not an accountant, but I know some some really good ones. I, I um, you know I know there's some contractual um, things that you have to deal with when you're you're running a, municip a municipality, and you know again surround myself with the right people. I have a legal advisor who has that that knowledge, and there's other people that I'll have to reach out to. Um, but as far as you know, being a, a trainer and a general manager right now, it's again you you got to put your people in the right position. Being a trainer, you're developing your people, you're empowering your people. If you see a weakness in a certain area, because I strongly believe that we have a lot of good employees in the city, um, but I think there are some mismanagement issues some maybe coaching opportunities um, learning opportunities and you know you don't know until you get in there um, from the outside looking in and from what my advisors are telling me there's some things that we need to do um, but you have to you know you have to delve in and see exactly what's going on but I think my training experience is I'll go in and, and learn as much as I can reach out to the people that I need to reach out to to to, to solve the problem and that's what I do now is I, I train people to be successful now, um, you've been active in the community. You have a slogan on there that's, I think, more than a slogan, unity in the community. Yeah. You've, you've had a couple of events. We've covered them. Mm -hmm. you've, you've been part of a, a cleanup crew in the city and everything like that. Uh, how important is that to you, and are you looking to see citizens be more participatory in Brockton? It's just so you, you, how long have you been at BCA? 21 years. So. You've been covering events that I've been involved in for 21 years. Mm -hmm. It's I, I know you know with social media now, um, you know uh, forums like the Hub, Brockton. You, you know pe it's more visible. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing events and, and activities and community um, engagements for 21 years. Um, peace marches, um, again coaching, uh, cleanups. I you know I've done when actually was seeing Mr. Farwell. Um, former Mayor Farwell, you know, in the council at large race, um, when I was a, a high school student, a senior at Brockton High, he, I, w I basically became, I, I just, you know, stepped up and I became an advocate for my fellow classmates. And I used to go for like debriefing meetings at City Hall as an 18, 19 year old um, in 1995. And, you know, I've done voter registrations. I registered by myself th over 3,000 new voters. 
when, if you remember, when Mr. Buckley mm -hmm. and Mike Sullivan were running against each other yep. for DA. And, you know, I was dealing with Mr. Robert Jones, who was a superintendent. I've always been involved in this community. I, I absolutely love the community. So, And I do think that we need more engagement. Like, people need to be involved. Even when it comes to public safety, we need people to look out for each other. So I think, again, my community background, I, I, I know, I, I strongly believe I have far more experience there. Um, you know, and I know that's what some of the, the other candidates are going to say is experience. Well, I have experience in areas that they don't have. Um, I, I feel I'm the veteran in, in, in certain respects. So, uh, yeah, definitely, you, key word in the community is unity. Um, you know, we, we have to, you know, it's a small, small size wise, a lot of people, but it is a small town. And uh, we need to care for each other. And I think, you know, getting people involved in what's going on in the community, caring about one another, is going to be a key to our success going forward. Now, talking about the people that you surround yourself with, yeah. uh, one of the key positions that the mayor gets to a point is a city solicitor. Yes. Um, I'm not going to ask you who you would pick if you get elected, but <laughs> um, some of the positions are already picked for you. Yes. Like on Monday night's council agenda, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to date this too much, but there's a reappointment for Maureen Cruz, the personal director. There's a mm -hmm. reappointment for Dave Farrell. The mayor can still appoint up until October. You can't do any appointments after that, whoever the mayor is, because they don't want a lame duck or even not a lame duck, let's say the person gets reelected, to make any appointments. Mm -hmm. The two-year term and all of that, what, what do you think of the whole structure of government? Jay Stewart tried to put forward an initiative to restructure government, and it didn't make it. What's your philosophy about putting people in the right position? I think it can hinder us if, if we can't do that. Um, but I understand you have to, you know, you have to follow the, the guidelines of a contract. Um, I, I agree it is something that I think needs to be looked at. I think we need to do a, a, an audit of sort or a, a committee to, to really look at how our government runs. Um, that's really my, my take on that situation. I think it definitely needs to be looked at to see what we can do to make sure we're being as effective as possible. Well, you mentioned your family. You mentioned yes. your wife and your two children. Yep. Uh, looking over your posts on social media, mm -hmm. you also talk about your parents who are yes. no longer with you. No. Do they inspire you? Every day. Everything I do, um, everything I do is to make my parents proud. Um, brought them, brought my family together here. Yeah. So, and I had such a great relationship with my parents. Um, you know, they both passed from cancer, but they were just great people, mm -hmm. wonderful people. So yeah, every everything I do is for my family and to represent my parents. Yeah. Now, when you put yourself in the public spotlight, yeah, you take hits. <laughs> you had to deal with the situation with your brother. Yeah. Okay. How, I mean, you, you told me when you first told me you were running that your wife was all there with you. Yes. And your family. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with the, the personal nature of politics in Brock? I, I've said it. We, we accept it. We do. We accept it. Oh, it's politics. That's not politics. That's not the way it's supposed to be. And people get vicious. But again, I'm from Brockton. I actually, I, I look for the fight. I'm not going to back down. Um, I'm just going to do it the right way. I let the other guys, you know, do it the wrong way. And they know um, the, the tactics they use. I, I just want to make sure everybody knows. Everybody knows that I'm definitely not backing down from, I'm, I'm a Brocktonian. I, I love it. I told you my ringtone is I had a tiger every day I listen to it like I'm I'm ready to go and I'm gonna make sure I we do it in a way my my wife and I knew this was gonna happen we by all means knew it was gonna happen um, I look forward to it look forward to it because we're gonna be victorious not just because we're gonna win and be the next man of the city champions but how we do it how we do it I think is very important and it's an example we want to show you know especially my son Something my son said to me when, because I had the conversation with my wife and, and my kids, and my daughter asked my buddy, she said, Dad, go, go, go kick their butt. My son says, Dad, I don't, I don't know if, if you can win. And I said, why? He goes, because you're not going to lie. And, you know, he's 13 now, but you're talking about two months ago because I was the first one that announced that I was going to run against 
you know, the current mayor, he said, I don't know if you can win. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you're not going to lie. You're going to tell people how it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to be honest. I want to be honest. Um, and that made me even more determined. I said, you know what? Now I'm going to win and prove to my son this is how you can do it. But at the end of the day, no matter what, I'm going to do it the right way. I had the same conversation with my dad. When I ran, mm -hmm. I had to get his permission because his, uh, as much as I love politics and more public service, his philosophy is the only good politician is a dead politician. So <laughs> I had to get his permission. He said, you really want to do that? I said, yeah, it's, it's about serving. When I ran for rep, I wanted to write legislation to help people. Mm -hmm. When I ran for probate, I wanted to help people. Probate's very confusing. I didn't want all the lawyers to do it. I wasn't successful. I love my school committee job. I went and checked on the candidates this time, the last day of the filing. It was very tempting to pick up papers or do something else. I'm dealing with some family health issues with my parents. I couldn't even think about it right now. Full-time job, part-time job. I got a new marriage, so I didn't go down that route. So now I get to sit on this side of the table and not get the questions, which is fine. But um, it, 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 at the end of the day, you got to deal with all sorts of personalities now and and, and, and they're going to love you egos. or hate you or whatever let's 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 start talking about some of the issues okay can i go on because you, you yeah. mentioned about my brother yeah and what i will say is that that same week you know my brother got in trouble with the law um there's a court process so we'll see what what the the verdict is on that but you know i, I was called by the the no, local paper and, you know, at first the reporter was like, you know, I apologize for having to call you about this. No, by all means, I want you to call me. I have no problems with it. I won't hide from my family. I absolutely love my brother. When I was a kid, my brother used to mow lawn, shovel and everything, and then bring me to the old movie theater at, at Westgate and spend all his money on me. I love my brother. My brother's a good person. I will stand by my brother no matter what. But we were also raised by my dad. If you do something wrong, if he did something wrong, you're accountable for it. You need to be accountable. So again, I wanted to make it clear when when the enterprise spoke to me about it that you know I love my brother. I will always stand by my brother. And if he's wrong, let that go through the court system. What I will say, and it disturbed me, is my you know my situation with my brother made the front page of the paper. But there were also other people in politics that same week. It wasn't made that big of a story. Um, but again, I'll be the one that will will stand up. Um, and, and be firm by, by my beliefs. And, and I just wanted to make sure I said that I absolutely love my brother. Um, if he would, did something, if he did something wrong, um, you know, we'll deal with, with the consequences. All I used to have to deal with is if my father would cross his arms and say, I'm very disappointed in you, that mm -hmm. would be that punishment enough. enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, that doesn't work always the same way now. Let's, let's go into the issues. You've been pretty vocal about different opinions on different things. Power plant. Against it? It's outdated technology. Um, it, you know, I'm not for a, a corporation that's trying to shove a business down down the residents' throats. And again, it's outdated technology. These plans were like for 15 years ago, and you know they're trying to force it. And wh why are we not going? This is the year 2015. We're almost in the year 2016. Why are we not looking for different sources of, of power? I'm, I'm not against power. I'm just against this specific. Um, facility um, again trying to be trying to be shoved down the, the throats of the residents the residents don't want it they don't want it so you're sitting on the other end of the table yes let's say you're successful yeah. okay does the mayor have the authority to enter into an agreement versus the city council how do you feel about with our former government no St strong council weak mayor um, you know I, I do think he has to make certain decisions the, the, the issue I have with you know, him entering to any agreement is I don't think he's bringing them to the table. You know, even if they disagree, you all come to the, everyone comes to the table, at least everybody had a say in what's going on. I don't believe in having backroom you know, meetings or closed meetings with, with anyone if it's something that, especially if the city council has to approve the sale of the water, you need them to. Um, so I don't think he's, he's handled it the right way. I really don't. Executive session allows you to deal with stuff that's pending litigation, yeah. sitting on the school committee, I know that. Mm -hmm. But it just seems like there's a deep divide between the council and the mayor. How would you, if you were mayor, deal with the council? I'd, and, and 
I mean, you, you've been a, you're an elected official now. I'm not going to tiptoe around things. I'm not. Everyone knows I'm running because I'm not happy with this current administration. I think we have a lot of egos here. And what I will say is that probably about a year and a half ago, there was an article in the paper where we had Bill answering the phones saying city council wouldn't appropriate the money for his staff. And I personally called, called Bill and said, Bill, because I, I love being part of this process, I said, I'll get some volunteers and we'll come down and answer the phones. You know, I felt bad because I'm believing what was in the paper. And again, Bill said to me, I can't do that. I can't have you guys do that. And I said, why? And he said, because then it would show the council that I can do this without the money. It's tactics. I don't think that's the right way to do things. And again, this is a conversation if he was sitting right here, we did have. Um, and I just don't think the approach is right. Somebody has to be, and I'm not saying some of the city councilors don't have big egos. But somebody has to be the bigger person. And I do believe as the leader of the city, it's your responsibility to take a couple from them and just say, okay, you know, figure out a different way. Because right now we're not working together. And it's a problem. It's a serious problem. Desal plant. Proposal by the mayor to buy it. There's a couple, there's actually a bunch of things about this, the desal plant that bothered me. And this bothered me when I initially looked at it last election. I didn't understand, I, I didn't understand why um, the council and the mayor at that time had signed into it. And, you know, I was being told it's an ironclad contract, mm -hmm. which I don't believe any contract is, is ironclad. There's always stipulations. Um, you know, he wants to now purchase this aquarium, this desalinization plant. Um, again, they've breached you know, the contract, in my opinion. My legal advisor has went over the details, and there's always going to be a lawyer on their side that's going to say, oh, we've done what we're supposed to. Of course, that's, you know, we need to get it into court. But we're currently paying $6.3 million for this contract just to use the water. Now, they've breached contract, in, in my opinion, and my legal advisors. Um, I know the city council is currently withholding the monthly payment um, currently. But now the mayor's proposed that we buy this plant that's valued at a little bit over $19 million. He wants to purchase it for $88 million. Now, the thing that gets me is, one, you want to buy something that's 19 now for $88 million. But the $88 million is actually a bond, or you know, the city would be looking for a loan, basically. And there's two percentages. You know, Correct me if, if you think I'm wrong on this, but it would basically be the low interest rate on that $88 million would be about 2% which if we purchased it, you'd basically be paying over 20 years, uh, like $109, $110 million. Mm. Um, but that's if we get the 2% interest rate. If we get the higher in interest rate, it's like 5%, we'd actually be paying close to $150 million over 30 year period. And that doesn't include the cost to run it. Now a report that I saw from CDM Smith, it costs over $600,000 just for the electricity the utilities at this facility, never mind the improvements that need to be made, never mind the payroll to run this facility. It doesn't make sense to me. When my dad always told me if something doesn't smell right, if something if there's smoke, there's fire, it, it doesn't sound right. And and people are being deceived in my opinion and being told, Oh, it's just, you know, we're gonna we can't even sell that water. No one's gonna buy that water. Um, and I know that's how, you know, I, I, they're proposing that we pay for it, is we're gonna sell this water which is like 18 times more expensive than like Silver Lake right now. Um, it just doesn't make sense. So I'm not going to insinuate anything other than just say, why would we buy a plant that's worth a little bit over $19 million for $88 million? And again, that $88 million is really not $88 million. It's over $150 million. Well, we did a whole bond project for Southeastern. Yes. We didn't go back to any of the communities to request more money. We did it over a 25-year period. We got a low rate for it, and we were able to renovate the school. It's hard to understand. I never signed more pieces of paper in my life with the district treasurer to bond that 25-year project. But we didn't have to go to eight town meetings in the city of Brockton and get more money. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. Um, priorities, okay, as mayor. You get to choose. You know, when you do the budget, we have five minutes to tell me. So yeah. I'm going to make sure I leave you room for a closing statement, okay? But I'm the chairman of the library board. I love the library. It was my first job before I ever did cable TV. There's libraries. There's council on aging. There's police. There's fire. There's schools. How do you make that decision? You're the guy that does the budget. The city council doesn't do the budget. The mayor does the budget. The city council can only cut it. They can't even shift money in the budget. How do you make those priorities? 
It's like how you do it at your house. It's like you pay your mortgage or your rent before you pay your cable bill. Um, and right now, I feel like we're paying our cable. This city is is paying the cable before we're paying um, our mortgage or our rent. A priority to me right now, and it should be to everyone, there's a couple hundred casings you know, um, on the ground the past couple of weeks. Um, there's shootings almost every day. Uh, we're at six six or seven murders in the city right now. High, some of, One of the highest murder rates in probably the past 20 years last year. Priority has to be public safety. And I, and I always want to make sure I'm clear on public safety. Public safety is police and fire. But I do believe there's a third component, and that's our youth and educational and, and other opportunities, employment opportunities and training opportunities for our young people. Right now, we're too, we're, we're become a reactionary um, police force. We need to be proactive. Um, and I do, you know, of course, our, you know, in a perfect world, we do have the money to be able to hire 70 more police. Because we're down 70 more police. We'd be able to hire the 25 to 36 more firemen um, that we need. But we need to figure out a way to utilize what we have currently and focus on public safety. Because right now, there's not too many people that I've spoken to that feel safe. You know, on, on a peak night, we have six police officers patrolling the city. That's a problem. On peak times, we have six police officers. So public safety and, and our youth have to be number one priority. They go hand in hand. Three, two minutes, to closing statement. Talk to the voters, forget about me for the moment, and why Jacob Tagger, why you're running. You can do phone number, website, whatever you can wrap into two minutes. My name is Jacob Tagger, L. Tagger Jr. I've been a lifelong resident of the City of Champions, and I, I would love to have the opportunity to represent you. Um, I, I strongly believe that we can do better. We really can do better in the city. I, I think there's a lot of opportunities, um, but you, you, you have to have you have to have coverage right now. And I don't feel that there's decisions that are being made in this city for the betterment of everyone. And you know, I don't have any political ties. So I think that out of every out of every candidate, including the, the current mayor, that actually makes my job as mayor easier because I don't owe any favors. I don't. I don't owe any favors. There's no political ties. But I just want to speak to you, not as a mayor, but as a man. I am raising my family. My wife is here with me and my two kids in the city. My intentions, my goal is to make this city the safest it can be and to give our young people opportunities. I am not against business. I'm for the right businesses. So I want to make sure people understand that I'm clear on certain stances. I'm against the casino. I'm against the casino because of its location. I'm against the power plant. We can do better. The desalinization plant, we need to get out of that. Um, but first and you know, most importantly is we need to to bring our community together, stop allowing ourselves to be divided and come together and, and, and really make Brockton the, the great place it, it's always been in the city of champions. If you ever want to reach out to me, I would love to speak to you. My phone number, 774-360-1137. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Jacob L. Taggart Jr. Um, for mayor on Facebook or Jacob L. Taggart Jr. at nationbuilder.com. Thank you, and I appreciate I appreciate the time. Thanks for coming on, Jake. Thank we'll you. be talking more. Thank you. You're watching uh, Democratically Speaking. Uh, Mark Lindy, your host. Uh, make sure you educate yourself about all the candidates, but most importantly, make sure you vote. If you don't vote, you can't complain. Get involved in your city and do your duty. Thank you.